Y'all like going fast? Yeah. Me too. So anyone with a frontal lobe can tell you that Sonic is no stranger to the old jaunt. A run around the block, a skip, and a... He goes fast, it's kind of his thing. But as any seasoned player will tell you, it was never just about that. In both the classics and early 3D titles, speed was treated more like a gimmick that you may see in the occasional loop-de-loop, -loop, but generally you would take things at your own pace. It could be fast, sure but it was never constant. Enter 2006, the cutting edge new tech is here, it's time to kick things up a notch for the next generation. Just as the Dreamcast and Genesis had done. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006 goes back to the established Adventure 1 formula for most of its runtime, but near the end of its first stage, Wave Ocean, you're hit with this. Not the loading screen. I mean, you are, but this. What the community has since dubbed as mock speed sections, even though the manual calls them super speed levels. I guess that wasn't cool enough to catch on. Breakneck speed, the music doubles in tempo, no way of slowing down, it's just you, the road, and your ability to move out of the way in time. Not while jumping, though, that's too charitable. This was quite the power move at the time. Until then, Sonic at his max speed was always reserved for brief moments of spectacle. Running through loops, the snowboard, the orca, the gun truck. Genocide. Moments in time that never lasted more than a few seconds because they were essentially on autopilot. You don't want to take control away from the player any longer than you have to. So for the longest time, these short bursts of automated speed were the best method of showing it off. That is, until 06 decided to reach a new compromise. Rather than create an entirely new gameplay style that could alienate fans or run the risk of not sticking to begin with, the tried and true adventure gameplay makes a full return. But every so often, mock speed will show up to cap off a level, allowing the game to simultaneously Spontaneously fall back on and refine what worked, while also pushing new ground. Conceptually, of course, this is all irrelevant to the final game's quality. The point is that the setup here is pretty brilliant. Mach Speed isn't some out-of-place gimmick that disrupts the flow or monopolizes the main game. It's an organic evolution of the character and genre that appears right when it needs to. That sensation you used to only get for a few seconds at a time now has entire levels built around it. But they still made sure to rein it in and never let these segments go on any longer than a minute. As exhilarating as it may be, even this can be become desensitizing if done too much. So they intuitively placed mock speed at the end of four main stages after you've already been running around as default Sonic. Now when you swap over, you have an immediate in-game comparison to show just how much faster you really are, especially considering how abysmally slow you are in the overworld. Please. It even ties into the story beats pretty well. Sonic trying to catch the egg carrier in Wave Ocean before it gets away, escaping the deadly fire tornado in Crisis City, chasing Eggman's runaway radical train, and once again, racing after the egg carrier before it crashes in Kingdom Valley. These are all plot points that demand a sense of urgency and thus justify the shift in game speed, potentially enhancing the story in question, or at least combining gameplay with narrative. And because they're fairly spread out across the campaign, it's impossible to overstay their welcome. By the time the next one rolls around, you may have already forgotten it was even in the game. Of course, I'm praising Mach Speed as if it was this renowned gaming phenomenon, when in reality it was a little different. Naturally, when traveling at such a high speed all of a sudden, players will need some time to get used to it. And while Wave Ocean has enough space to mess around in, a harsh new set of rules has surfaced that I don't think many can learn without some trouble. First, Sonic is unable to stop or slow down at any point. When he says, Let's speed up. There is no going back, not even a solid rock wall can stop this titan. He'd rather roll into infinity than accept defeat, what incredible determination. Making contact with any piece of terrain will also damage you, whether it be trees, boulders, enemies, or Sonic's true nemesis, furniture. Merely stubbing your toe on the smallest of objects is enough to KO the blue man. Like this tire in Crisis City that barely clips me. I was right at the end too, you can see the goal ring. Wait, I won? The biggest hurdle without question though, is the inability to move in midair. If you jump at the wrong time in any direction that isn't straight ahead, it's nearly a guaranteed death. You can light dash to help stay on course instead of jumping, which I do believe is the key to success, but when jumps become mandatory, it won't always be there to bail you out. Only by taking damage are you able to regain control, but if you have the foresight to plan that out, then you probably have the foresight to not jump at the wrong time. This is single-handedly responsible for the majority of deaths. Not necessarily because it's hard, but it's jarring to go from gameplay that's generally very 
very forgiving, to missing a key function like midair control. It's honestly out of character for a franchise built on mobility. This restriction doesn't complement the core mechanics in any way, it actually discourages experimentation. It's more beneficial to stay in your lane and jump as little as possible, which isn't a style Sonic is known for. It even tricks you at some points. Jumping for an item at the undisclosed wrong time can send you packing. Not to mention all the jank I haven't even brought up yet. A light speed dash, freaking the camera out and making me collide with the bridge, entering this loop too far to one side and getting spit out early, the hit detection on these trees being what I can only describe as ethereal, somehow hitting me when I'm clearly out of range. Hit detection in general is inconsistent, some walls hurt you while others simply do not. The lack of midair control limits your ability to play with such an exciting speed, as I've said. Crisis City's array of debris is nearly impossible to avoid under such conditions. Sonic doesn't have a proper wall jumping animation, slowdown is ever present, control is too loose, there isn't even a goal ring for Wave Ocean just isn't there. This is where the rage quit happens. Mainly because of all the loading screens you have to endure upon getting a game over, but still. These sections can be frustrating to get the hang of and are absolutely a spike in difficulty that lack polish. But, I'll be honest, I could never bring myself to hate them. On the contrary, I appreciated the unique intensity these segments brought. It's not often that my hands start to sweat during a Sonic game, and it's oddly refreshing. There's a sort of bliss in that uncontrolled chaos. Knowing that an ill-timed jump could send me to an early grave makes pulling one off all the more sensational. A light dash saving you moments from impact, threading the needle to dodge an explosion, being unable to stop or slow down puts a pressure on that drives me to trust my instincts. Similar to the Sonic 2 special stages, speed is no longer the reward for mastery over a level. Instead, it's given to you in full, and the challenge is all about controlling it to stay alive. You may feel out of control in place, but learning to tame that uncertainty is its own reward. When victory isn't assured, achieving it becomes all the sweeter. The quality of the execution may be in question, but you can't deny that these sections demanded your full attention. Regardless if you were someone who rage quit at it or you were the guy telling everyone else to get good, they made an unmistakable impact on you that wouldn't be soon forgotten. And deep down, I think that's always been Sonic's goal as a franchise. I mean, aside from making money even when it bombs critically. Of course, if I'm ever going back to mock speed, it's on Project 06. While I do derive a certain amount of pleasure from Vanilla 06's crude rigidity, the added polish here is simply too good to pass up. Better graphics is a given, but new flourishes have been added as well. Such as the egg carrier now casting a shadow on the ground to give reference on how close you are. The motion blur around the edges that used to stay there the whole time have been removed and saved for when you use the light dash. Newly equipped with anime speed lines. The camera also pulls in closer behind to bring you into the action more. Sonic's wall jumping animation has been restored. The light dash no longer causes seizures. The hit detection on items is way more generous, so you don't need the precision of a triple bypass to get five rings. The collision overall has been imp- <laughs> Crisis City isn't complete madness anymore, it even has a large truck you have to jump over at the end. And yes, you can move while jumping. That one change alone would have been enough, but of course, Chaos X went the extra mile to give us something truly special. Movement in general is tighter, I feel like I have a stronger handle on Sonic while strafing. But that sense of chaos is still there, as the max speed has been increased. Not by much, but when playing both games back to back, it was enough to notice. And thanks to better control, I can fully appreciate that sense of speed by pulling off more tricks than the base game would have ever allowed me to. Which I do believe was the initial intent in development. These weren't made to frustrate the player, they were made to wow us. Give us that trademark Sonic speed for a new generation only now, it's not just for show. I will admit there are some changes that leave me a little mixed. Sonic can now bounce and slide, which will slow you down to help make better turns and correct any jumps you may have clearly overshot. This was how I discovered this cool route I had never seen in Wave Ocean. But you can also just kinda... Chill out. Slow yourself down to a crawl and you can take your sweet time. Explore your surroundings like never before. I was able to get on this bridge that you normally go around and I found a kill plane in the air. Heck is that doing there? I was running backwards at one point, messing around with the acceleration against an invisible wall. Okay, Sonic, that's enough. Slow down. Slow down! It's a nice addition that offers more control options. That part I don't mind. And it is surreal getting to move around an area you normally weren't able to, but... That's also what I'm mixed on. For me, the big appeal of Mach Speed was that you couldn't stop under any circumstances. That hint of danger from a lack of total control in a do-or-die situation was why they were so thrilling. Being able to kill the flow at any time also kills the tension that was so well highlighted. You'll even stop running altogether if you hug a wall at low speed. I know no one is gonna play like this, but knowing that it's there does take away some excitement for me. I remember I used to think that there was a time limit for these. Like the egg carrier would get away if you didn't keep up and you'd have to try 
try again. Not the case, it would seem. If you stall it out, Eggman will stop moving entirely and wait for you to catch up. How considerate. So yeah, the stakes are a bit lower. Same thing with the new bounce back animation. When colliding with large objects like boulders or trees, Sonic will get knocked back and stagger for a moment before taking off again. This prevents you from getting stuck and gives you a second to regain composure, but it's also a bit of a pace breaker. Once again, I felt like the original had this seamless flow where nothing could stop you, and now that's being tinkered with. To be fair, this is good incentive to not take damage, and most objects don't cause it anyway, but I'm not entirely sold on its inclusion yet. Sometimes it can actually get in the way, too. If you bonk in Crisis City, it's a guaranteed death. The tornado steals you away before your control comes back, and that's no fun. If I'm already close to the tornado, then I bonk and die, yeah, that's on me. But you could be going full speed and lose it all thanks to a feature that's supposed to help you out. Reducing the recoil and stagger time could be a good idea. While we're on the subject of Crisis City, though, man, did this get nerfed. I agree it needed some cleaning up, but I think it was a bit much. Playing it the regular way is still fun and all, but I soon realized that you can beat the whole thing without touching the analog stick. Jump a few times and you're good. The most chaotic level in the game is now a quick time event with optional gameplay. I can't even blame anyone for not seeing this because I didn't even try it till now. Should be an easy fix though, just have more debris fly into your path instead of on the sides. Here comes a billboard. You mean that billboard? Yeah, it's not touching me. Radical Train had a similar nerf. I'm not sure where the hitbox is for these explosions, but I could not take damage even when I tried. Am I going so fast that the fire can't touch me? That would actually make realistic sense, but the whole challenge behind this final stretch was about riding the line between the wall and the explosion. But in this current build, not so much. Thankfully, this is also a pretty easy fix. Enlarge the hitbox. Done. I'm not sure how I feel about the hit detection overall. You don't get ghost punched anymore, which is great, but there are instances that feel a little too generous. I mean, look at this. How am I not getting hurt? Uh, sometimes I'll be surprised when I take damage and others when I don't. Grabbing items is a lot more forgiving now since it can be hard to be precise at such speeds, but I'll look at a freeze frame and I'm like, is this okay? Should I be allowed to get that? I, something's off. I don't know, I'm still undecided on this, but I figured I'd mention it. As a nice compromise, if Chaos X has plans to include the hard and very hard modes of each level, that could be an appropriate time to make mock speed more chaotic and demanding. Only time will tell on that. Sonic? Sonic. Oh, it's fine. In conclusion, I think Mach Speed always had a great premise, thrusting the player into a high-intensity reaction-based challenge that simply lacked the final touches to make it an instant classic. Clearly, this paved the way for the boost gameplay to transpire, but I think Mach Speed's biggest advantage was that they didn't have to create an entire game surrounding it. It could be treated as an arcade-style minigame to shake things up and catch players off guard in a good way. And in Project 06, that's exactly how I see it. The finer details have been put into place, and while I have my critiques, we have something truly fantastic on our hands that I know Chaos X will somehow find a way to make even better. Cause he's a wizard. Thank you so much for all the support on my last video. I could not have anticipated that level of success. Let me know if you'd like to see more content like this and I'll gladly keep it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. All right. See ya.